This video will discuss the Gibbs-Helmholtz equation in thermodynamics. So the Gibbs free energy is a function of temperature and pressure, as we've seen thus far in this chapter. The change in Gibbs energy that occurs during some small perturbation to the system state is equal to minus the entropy times the change in temperature plus the volume times the change in pressure. Uh, the Gibbs energy is a state function, so the change in energy during some, the change in Gibbs energy during a large change in the system state, delta G, is equal to the final Gibbs energy minus the initial Gibbs energy. This is also equal to the integral from the initial state to the final state of dG for every point along the change. Or we could also say the integral from the initial to final state of minus SDT plus VDP. All right, if we have the temperature being a constant, then the change in Gibbs energy that occurs is entirely due to the change in pressure. So delta G equals the integral from the initial pressure to the final pressure of the volume integrated with respect to pressure. For an ideal gas, PV equals NRT. So the volume of an ideal gas is NRT over P. The molar Gibbs energy is the Gibbs energy divided by the number of moles. And the molar volume is the volume divided by the number of moles. So the change in the molar Gibbs energy during some, during some change in pressure is equal to the integral from the initial pressure to the final pressure of the molar volume integrated with respect to pressure, which is the integral from initial to final volume of RT over P as we've taken nRT and divide, over P divided by N. So this is equal to RT times the natural log of P2 minus the natural log of P1, because the integral of dP over P is natural log of P. So we see that the change in the molar Gibbs energy during an expansion or compression event at a constant temperature is equal to the gas constant times the temperature times the natural log of the final pressure over the initial pressure. All right, so during isothermal processes, we'll see that the molar enthalpy change is zero. So the molar enthalpy of, a, of an ideal gas is independent of pressure during isothermal processes. So this change in molar Gibbs energy is going to be equal to negative the temperature times the change in the molar entropy as we can see from this type of differential up here. All right, so the change in the molar entropy that occurs during an expansion or compression of an ideal gas is equal to negative gas constant times natural log of final over initial pressure. All right, the Gibbs energy we can define as the internal energy minus Ts plus PV. We can also define it as the enthalpy H minus Ts, because the enthalpy is U plus PV. So for a given temperature, the Gibbs energy is equal to the enthalpy minus the temperature times the entropy. So if we divide both sides by temperature, G of T over T is equal to H of T over T minus S of T. If we want to take the partial derivative of the Gibbs energy uh, divided by temperature. I believe I need a, an over T in there somewhere. That'll do. Okay, the partial derivative of the Gibbs energy over temperature with respect to temperature at constant pressure is equal to, well, we have uh, DDT of H over T, which is going to give us from the chain rule minus H of T over T squared plus 1 over t dh dt. So we take the derivative of 1 over t first, then the derivative of h of t. Then we have minus uh, the derivative with respect to t of s of t. So ds dt is equal to, from previous videos on the third law of thermodynamics, the constant pressure heat capacity divided by the temperature, which is equal to 1 over the temperature times, and the constant pressure heat capacity is the partial derivative of the enthalpy with respect to temperature. So this term here is minus 1 over T dH dt, 
This term is plus 1 over t dh dt, so those two cancel out. So the result is that the partial derivative of g over t with respect to temperature at constant pressure is the negative enthalpy divided by the temperature squared. So this doesn't look very important now. Um, this is going to become important later on because we'll use the Gibbs-Helmholtz equation to use what's called the Van Hoff equation, which is going to give us the temperature dependence of equilibrium constants of chemical reactions. So this is true for a Gibbs energy, and it is also going to be true for various uh, sums and, and uh, combinations of Gibbs energies. So what's going to be most useful to us is the partial derivative of delta G over T with respect to T equals minus delta H over T squared. And this will allow us to tell, to uh, figure out how does the Gibbs, uh, how does the equilibrium constant of a reaction change as the temperature changes.